Well, thank you. God bless you for staying tuned to our program for today from the heart with uh, the elder John D. Milburn and, of course, my absolutely fabulous co-host, none other than my sister in the gospel, London, Washington. And we are just so happy to be back in the studio on today. And uh, Sister Lynn, before I get started, why don't you just say hello to the people? Hello, everybody. I miss you. <laughs> yeah, we both were were uh, involved with other things on last month, so we didn't get a chance to get into the studio. But we, again, we just thank God for being here on today. Uh, I've kind of been on a educational kick, uh, so to speak, recently. And uh, the more I learn things, the more I get into education, the more I realize we need to know a lot more than what we already did. And uh, we were talking earlier, and I've been saying this for the last, well, man, for a long time, as a matter of fact. Uh, we have gotten to the point where we are becoming, uh, for lack of a better phrase, a lazy generation. And because of this, we are just willing to be told everything and have everything done for us as opposed to finding out what's going on for ourselves. And quite often I go to the scripture that says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And again, that's rightly dividing the word of truth. And then when we go back into the Old Testament scripture, it says that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And when you think about those two scriptures, it makes uh, education, uh, most important above all things and you know we we like to say that we're saved sanctified filled with the holy ghost running on see what the end's going to be you know with that mighty burning fire and all the other good stuff but a lot of times we really don't even have an understanding of what it is that we are supposed to be doing uh and i and i almost hate to go here but i was talking with my professor uh, not too long ago and in one of the classes that we were talking about he was saying that he went out and preached at a church and the pastor pulled him into the office afterwards and said, Doc, you know, you can't keep preaching like that. He said, you're, you're giving too much knowledge to the people. I won't have control over them. And all he does was talk straight Bible. Uh, and of course, he has not been back there to preach again because he said it, anytime he can't preach the truth and he can't tell the truth, it's not a place that he needs to be. So, but this is the importance of us actually learning for ourselves. And it's absolutely fantastic. And I think we have a call coming in. I don't know how we're going to answer that. I forgot. Uh, is it number one up top? Oh. And phone number now. Or press two to cancel this verification. Okay. Oh. Well, I thought we were getting it. Is there a caller on there? Okay, not yet. Caller, if you meant to call into the show, please give us a ring back, and we'll, we'll get this uh, answering the phone thing correctly. But uh, again, we, we sit around, and we don't realize we just do what people tell us to do. But how do you even know if what we're being told is the right thing? How do we know if what we're being told is the truth? And my pastor that I had for many, many years, well in excess of 30, well, a little over 30 years, uh, before he went on to glory. He always told us, he said, don't just take it because I said it. He said, but look at the word. He said, I can back everything I'm telling you with scripture. And when someone tells you, let me prove to you, let me show you. And as a matter of fact, research it for yourself to see that what I'm saying is the truth. That's about all that we can ask for them. But again, we've got to the point we don't want to do anything for ourselves anymore. We, we are a, a microwave generation. I don't want to study it. Just tell me what it is. And I even have that happening on the job. They said, "Well, don't, 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 you know, uh, don't, don't show me. Just, 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 just tell me. I don't want to have to do it." But what are you going to do when I'm not here? Right. So, and this is the important thing. So, again, we want to talk a little bit about studying things for yourselves, regardless of who's talking to you. And on top of it, uh, we don't want to perish for a lack of knowledge. What do you think about that? Well, I do know that studying is important. You know, and along with studying comes comes knowledge of course that's how you get your knowledge is through studying um wisdom and understanding so in order to be able to learn something you have to be able to you have to study it to get the knowledge and then you have to understand it so it's a lot that goes into to just listening and learning it's more to it than just hearing somebody just uh 
tell you what to do. A lot of times we have manuals of, well, I don't even know if they have physical manuals for everything nowadays. They probably still do. But everything is, like you say, microwave. Everything is, is uh, you can either get it on the Internet or, or, your, or your phone or some digital something or other. You know, and there's nothing wrong with being a part of the, they call the millennial generation. Because, we, you know, you got to go with the flow. So you, you don't want to be unlearned about what's happening today either. So it's, it's all a, a learning process. And if you don't watch it, you can get lost in the shuffle. And, you know, and out here today, everybody is not out there for our good. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people have uh, other motives than what they're showing forth to us. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to be under control of anybody other than God, wow. uh, mm -hmm. you know, the Holy Ghost. That, that's the only control that I want to have over me. Now, I'm not saying that we don't need guidance because every last one of us needs guidance. It doesn't make a difference how well learned you are, what type of degrees you have, how much money you have. We still need guidance from someone other than ourselves. So, and then this is the reason why, and to be perfectly honest, even in the church world, all of us need some type of mentor. Mm -hmm. we, re we really do. Because there are some things that we only see f uh, by our own compassion, our own emotions, through our own eyesight. And sometimes, you know, I, I'm going to put it this way. Sometimes when I'm on a job, I might have somebody that's their first day out on the job with me. Really doesn't know anything about what we're doing. And I'll say, okay, this is what the job entails. We have to try to fix this part here. we got to put this over here. I said, but I'm, what I'm trying to decide, I know what's the finished product is supposed to be, but what does it look like should be the easiest way to do it? And sometimes we get so technical minded in everything. You know, we, we got all this knowledge stuck <laughs> up and thing. We, we can only see it from our point of view. Mm -hmm. And as they say, out of the mouths of babes, mm -hmm. because I've had a very new personal job. Well, well why can't we just do it this way? And I, and I looked at them like, wow, that, that is so easy. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have thought of that about that. You know, so there's a lot of times when we really need to have a different opinion around. And then if it's a, uh, an opinion that seems reasonable, then there's two things that we need to do. The scripture tells us to try the spirit by the spirit. If we do that, the spirit, if we truly have the spirit of God dwelling in us down on the inside, mm -hmm. the spirit of God is not going to lead us astray in what we are trying to do. Mm -hmm. And secondly, we can always go back and pray on or study to research what we're being told, especially in the church world. We need to be able to study ourselves to the point where not only should we know ourselves and that's so very very important we have to learn ourselves and as we learn ourselves then we are going to learn what the spirit of god is saying to us and what our motivation should be in life mm -hmm. because all of us have a path that we should be following but we don't want to really uh go go into the path because why it might be hard sometimes sometimes we might have to study sometimes we might have to uh spend extra time doing something rather than playing video games or or, 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 or on Facebook. We got to come back from some of those things, lay it down. Sometimes we need to go find that secret closet and sit down with, with the book, namely the Bible up here. We need to do other things that we need to do to get the knowledge that we are supposed to have. And, you know, even I've gotten to the habit right now. I can tell you, as busy as my day is, I usually take about two hours out every day to start studying things. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean I have to be reading it specifically, but what I do when, I, when I'm taking my shower, bath, or whatever in the morning, I have something playing, and I listen to it. And then later in the day, I go back and then I research what it is that I've heard. Mm -hmm. And this goes for law. It goes for the type of job that I do, which is uh, contracting work. It goes for uh, spirituality. It goes for the Bible. Everything that we do, we need to continually grow. And if we don't grow, we might as well go. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing that we have to realize. We have to continue to educate ourselves. And there's only one time when we have to stop, and that's when we are taken out of this world. Amen. So these things are so very important. And, and I can't stress it. And I'm, I'm going to have an announcement about something coming up for young people. And, and people, this is another thing, that when we are stressing the importance of education, how can we educate our young people except we are educating ourselves? 
Have you ever seen, Sister London, have you ever seen anybody teach something that they didn't know how to do? No, because it's impossible to teach something that you don't know, right? So if, if it's impossible to teach something that you don't know how to do, if we're not learning what we need to learn, how are we going to instruct our young people? How are we going to instruct our children? What, what are we supposed to do in that case? We're not, not able to if you don't know. So the only thing that's left is for us to learn. That way we can pass on that information. And the, the, the old cliche that's something we've been hearing for the last few years is each one teach one. Mm -hmm. And the more we learn, it is our, 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 our God-given order to go, what we have learned in him to go out and give it to the world, right. to give it to somebody that's else. Right. That that legacy, that spiritual legacy, that godly legacy will be spread. And, you know, and if you look at my kids, uh, it's funny because they, and I'm talking about my biological children this time, when they're out and people know me, they say, man, your, your kids are just like you, just like <laughs> you, just like you. Even Bishop used to tease me sometime. He said, you know, he said, I don't want near another one like you, but I can't do without you. <laughs> and then when my sons came along, he said, he said, I can't believe it. There's two more of you in the church. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, if you teach what you have learned, if you teach what you're supposed to do, it's, it's the reason why they call uh, that we're supposed to be called Christians, because we've been taught the word of Christ. The elders, we've been taught the, the, church, the scriptures. Mm -hmm. We've been taught the spirit of Christ. Mm -hmm. It says that this mind be in you that was in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. We've been taught those things. And if we are doing what we have been taught and, and teaching other people, then we can be called Christ. Like we can be called Christians. Yes. That's the only reason why we can hold that title. Because if we're not doing what we were supposed to, we're not doing what we were taught, then we can't be like him. And, and I don't know about you, but uh, I, I've learned something. Sure, he went around healing. He went around teaching things of the spirit. But Christ also taught, but I almost hate to say it this, common knowledge. He, he, he taught uh, good, decent yes, knowledge. Yes. He, he didn't just teach teach uh, things strictly out the Bible. He gave feasible uh, 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 what was feasible stories so that we could live this life right down here. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't about you gotta you have to stay on your knees and pray all the time. You can't speak to anyone without you know praising God at the same time. Mm -hmm. If you uh, call me and you and I say, oh, thank God, praise God, I go to speaking in tongues, how are we going to have a conversation? So he was teaching us also good sense. Even Paul taught us good sense. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, you can speak in tongues all day long, but I would rather speak five words of my understanding, with my understanding, understanding right. so that the church might be edified. And when we say the church, so often we get stuck on the fact that it's a whole congregation of people. But I got news for you right now. There's two churches sitting right here. There's a church right here in me because I am the church. Mm -hmm. There's a church right there in you because you are the church. Mm -hmm. We are the church. It is not the building. It is not necessarily the congregation. Mm -hmm. But we are to sanctify the church. We are to help the church grow. That means we have to grow too. Yes. I, don't know, I like what you said when you were talking about how he taught the uh, parables. I mean, there's uh, so many uh, teachings in Proverbs to tell you if you do this a certain way, this will happen. If you don't do this a certain way, this won't happen. And, I mean, if you if you read the scripture, it, you know, that's one of the first places to go to learn and to get taught on. We talk about life skills. Uh, <laughs> everything that you want to name in life is in the word of God. It's, I mean, he doesn't leave one stone unturned. So if that's all you read, I mean, I know you read something else, you, you would learn, and le learning never stops, because he says also be repetitive with, your, with what you read and what you're learning. You can go back through the same scripture, and you can learn some more. Oh, so yes. you know, even about age, about being older, doesn't mean that uh, I'm, I'm grown and I have all this information, but you can, as long as you live, like you say, until God says it's well done, you can constantly keep learning and keep learning and sometimes you learn like you, you raise these young people and uh and you put what you know into them right right they turn around and they give you some too so exactly. it's the learning it never ever ever stops it never stops and and it's so true what you said we give them something they give us something back so we learn from one another mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is, sometimes we just, we, we don't want to go any further past the Bible than what we went to Sunday school, if we even go to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. But we have to realize that, again, you know, people tell me, well, I, I, I don't like to read the Bible, it's boring. I'm like, really? Well, 
uh, is there anything you can learn from? Well, not really. You know, it's, it's all that churchy stuff. But then I said, well, what kind of stuff do you like? What kind of stories you like? I like espionage. Well, that's in the Bible. Oh, yeah. I like love stories. Believe me, that's in the yeah, Bible. Yeah. <laughs> I like stories about war. That's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I like stories about, you know, uh, uh, family matters. That's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You cannot choose a subject in life that is not in the Bible. That's right. And I mean, and if you think about it, and, and, I, and I, I like to go here from time to time. You know, we, we call ourselves, I know one of my friends used to call herself a Mac Daddy. But the, the, but the original Mac Daddy, the original, <laughs> the original Mac Daddy one. was back in the Old Testament. <laughs> and when and Solomon began to talk about that woman, when he began to talk about how her lips looked, how she smelled, how her hair flowed, the shape of her hips, and people don't realize it's poetic, all but of it's this. there, right? It's poetic and it's there. But we, when we read it, we read it as, oh, that's just so godly. But you know, we have to think ourselves so high, and that's one of the issues. We want to get too high and mighty mm -hmm. in, in, in our spirituality to be any earthly good. Mm -mm. And this is all part of the learning process. Yeah. The higher we go in God, the higher we go in the Word, the higher we go in the Spirit, the more good we are right down Amen. here on this Amen. earth. Amen. But when we stop learning that which we need to know to live on a day-to-day -day basis, that is when we stop being any earthly good. And, and you know, I remember coming up, uh, my, my grandparents used to talk about uh, this particular lady, and you, you, couldn't, you couldn't have any kind of conversation with her. I mean, I remember one time we had ice cream. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, how, how did you like your ice cream? She went speaking in tongues. Uh, you know, you couldn't do anything because she was too spiritually minded. She couldn't have a normal conversation. Mm. And and people don't get me wrong. I believe in speaking in tongues. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the manifestations of the Spirit. I believe that there are healings through the Spirit. I believe in everything that the Bible speaks of. But sometime we have to come down to earth and do what we're supposed to do. And this is part of the teaching. Even in the scripture, it, 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 there never was a thing that when somebody would come to us, I'm hungry and I'm cold, and you say, all right, be warm and fed, go unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. But it said that we should feed those, mm -hmm. feed the hungry, we should clothe the naked, we should do a lot of different things, which we have gotten away from. Why? Because we, we're trying to think that that's just old stuff, it's antiquated, it's not anything that we need to be doing anymore. But when we get into the Word of God, when we get into the Spirit of God, when we get into what the, the Lord has been telling us, what He's speaking in our own hearts and our own minds, if you truly listen, you realize that we are responsible one for another, and when we are responsible one for another, we have to step up and we have to handle everything that comes across our table. Mm -hmm. If, if I know you have a need and God has given me the ability or the means by which I can satisfy that need with you, I'm supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. it you, know, you know, we even talk about widows indeed. Nowadays, it, it's like, well, you know, you, you know, she's not related to me. They're not related to me. Or that, you know, that's left up to them. They got to find their own way. But what we're supposed to do is love one another. We're supposed to be compassionate towards one another. And when we do this, do you know that people watch us and regardless of what we say, they watch what we do. They learn more from what mm -hmm. we do because they know what you truly have in your heart, what you have truly learned is what you are going to do. Very plain and simple. There, there is no two ways about it. And not only people, but especially our young people, our children, they look at what we do more than anything that we say. We can, we can yell and tell them what to do right all day long, but if we're out doing the wrong thing, that is what they're going to pick up, and that is the, that's what they're going to start doing for themselves. But we have to understand, if we stay in our word, if we stay in what the scripture is telling us to do, and even when we get into trouble, when we have heartache, when, we, when we're uh, going through sufferings of sickness and all the other things, it's the word of God that's yeah. going to bring us forth. Oh, yeah. So that's another reason why we have to be educated in the, word. in the word. We have to bring that word out so that somebody will know that there's a true and that there's a living God. They're not going to look in the sky and say, God, are you there? Which I've seen people do. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. th there's not going to come an answer like that. But he's going to speak through someone else. He's going to speak through us. He's going to speak through us through love, through our words, through our compassion, through all the things that he has told us to do. And this is the reason why he and say, well, I'm going to send my spirit out into all the world. He said, but go ye therefore into every nation. Mm -hmm. 
teaching them and baptizing them and do whatsoever I have commanded you to do. So if we're not learning, how are we going to teach anybody right. else? Amen. So we need to, you know, somebody said, get off the pot. <laughs> get off the pot. We, we need to, I'm not saying the other part. Uh, okay. <laughs> Either use it or get off the pot. Mm -hmm. We, we need to get up and take the things that we have been taught, that we're learning, and continue to learn, and we need to show forth what it is. It's kind of like we, we in our Christendom, so to speak, are like some other folks that I know. They've been lifelong uh, college members. They, they, they've learned everything, but they never utilize anything that they've been taught. Mm, mm -mm. So if we're not going to use it, mm. why even bother with it? And plus, if you have knowledge and you have ability, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it, plain and simple. Yeah. So, and you see, it's just like you, and, and, and I've watched you. you. You look for people, and you see what they have in them, and, and I know if there's any way that you can be a help, that you will. I mean, even, even when you thought I was sick, when I was at the time, or I wasn't feeling well, you showed up at the house. <laughs> And because because you know I hadn't eaten yet and I didn't feel like going out anyway, so you brought food. And see, this this is to some people that might be a, a very minute thing, mm -hmm. but when it's done with the love of God, when it's done according to the Word of God, mm -hmm. it, that's just what we're supposed to do. And you never know the impact mm -hmm. that it's going to have, not just for the person that you're doing it to, but for others that are around mm -hmm. you. And, and do you realize how much pe how many people I've been around that know you? And matter of fact, and I, and I gotta say, that know you. And and when they speak of you, they always speak well because they speak of things that they've seen you do or, or stuff that you've helped them with. Yeah, and 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 you may not even know other people are watching that, and they're like, wow, look, look, look at what's being done. And we become a lesson for other people. Mm -hmm. So if we can't learn from one another, what is our point? What what is really our point? But we have to step up. We have to follow that word. You need to get down deep into the word of God that you can do what he is asking you to do. And, and here's the secret about it. After you have read, after you have heard, then you sit back and you meditate on that word both day and night. You think about that word. You let the, it's almost as if there's a fine stew on, on the stove. You, you, you let it marinate. You let it simmer. You know, there, there are certain people, certain cultures, there's always a pot simmering on the stove mm -hmm. because they're always going to be ready to, to put something out on the table. Mm -hmm. And we have to put that word of God Amen. out on the table Amen. because there's somebody out there that is hungry. They need to be fed. If they don't get it from us, who are they going to yes. get it from? Amen. Plain and simple. And I see we've got about three more minutes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this real quickly. Uh, there's something up. This is a very fine lady. Uh, her name is Rhonda Alexia Webb. Uh, I've, I've known her since the seventh grade, and I'm going to tell you how old she is. But we've been friends for a long time. She teaches young people how to uh, become a little more mature, how to think a little more for themselves. And she has something called a kidposium. And what it is, it's a symposium for kids. And they're going to be teaching you in a roundabout way of how our young people can learn to handle business, mm -hmm. even start their own businesses. And the thing that I like about it, you know, we like to see what our peers are doing. So we're talking about young people, school-age children, even starting as low as the second and third grade. And normally she starts with kindergarten mm -hmm. and works her way up. But there is a young lady right here in Detroit. I'm not going to give her name right now, uh, but she has been in business for at least five years and and i think it's more like nine years she's 14 years old mm -hmm. she goes around the city as well as a matter of fact throughout the state mm. teaching young people and uh this is going to be held in on the 21st of october and this is going to be held in saginaw michigan i can't give you all the information but if you would like more information on it, you can always call 313-384 seven four six zero again that's three one three three eight four seven four six zero i'm telling you if you have young people that really want to learn more about themselves and how to be somebody and matter of fact uh the subject is dream the impossible dream so we have to reach higher and the same way we're talking about with our education we have to learn to reach higher and i'm gonna give the last minute over to you Last minute, I want to announce this instructor of ours that's a part of London Harris Trade Enrichment. 
we are having our uh, workshop, another workshop again, October the 14th, and we're going to be talking. He's doing trade skills, uh, music and vocal, life skills. We're doing uh, media arts, and we're doing small business startup this time. So if you're interested in getting information on attending that and come listen to this fine gentleman, uh, I think you're teaching HVAC this time. Uh, I will be teaching HVAC. And you will call 248-701-0885. Two four eight seven zero one zero eight eight five, and uh, that's going to be the second Saturday of October. Yeah. Thank you for letting me say that. Oh no! And see, there's more to just learning, just learning the Bible. We have to learn how to live in this life. Mm -hmm. And with the uh, instructors that uh, Sister Lana just told you about, they all have a long history in what they are going to be teaching. So I'm going to tell you, if you don't come, you are going to be missing out on something that is absolutely awesome. So whatever you do, give Sister London a call and sign up for this class. You will enjoy it, and you'll go away with more information than you ever thought you were going to get. And how long is that going to be? That's a three-hour uh, workshop. Three-hour workshop. 10.30 to 1.30 in the afternoon. You will glean so much And lunch from is so included, many. folks. <laughs> oh, now see that class, and you're going to feed us too? <laughs> how good does that get? And for you guys in the church world, you know we do like to eat. Like to eat. We definitely <laughs> like to eat. But uh, we, we are just looking forward to it. Just another way of uh, educating ourselves or getting a little higher, stepping on a little higher ground. And whatever you do, learn something every single day. It, play tapes, uh, go online and, and go and find some, some good Christian music, find some good bi biblical training. Do whatever it is that you need to do. I'm studying constitutional law. I'm doing a lot of different things, getting ready to go back into seminary again. But our learning should never, ever, ever cease. And when it does, then we actually cease to exist the way that we are supposed to. And I don't, you know, it's strange because uh, my, my past bishop, uh, he died at the age of 97. He pastored 63 years. And even uh, a couple weeks before he died, he said, I'm still learning how to preach. Mm. I'm still learning. And see, and that, that just tells me something. He, and I told him one day, I said, sir, you probably uh, forgot more than I even know. And you still know more than I know. So there's a lot of things that we need to do. But get it together, people. Elevate yourselves through the word of God, through other different types of educational avenues. And then we can stand tall, firm, and we will be somebody for someone to learn something from. That's the only way that we are going to do the word of God, the way he's instructing us to do it. So we're going to say that we want you to have a fantastic day. May God bless you. Remember in every good work, and he will. Have a good day, and may God bless. <music>